Hey guys, Kurt from uh, Time Machine Transport. I'm uh, putting in a air compressor on a 2001 T2000, Kenworth T2000. So I got everything ready to put in. Uh, I'm just going to go over a couple things so you guys don't make the same mistakes I made. Been a little frustrating so far. Um, anyways, what I did was I, I took pictures of everything. Don't mind my mess. I'm been crazy, been frustrated. Um, anyways, um, if you guys, instead of going to, uh, Freightliner or Kenworth, well, if you have a, that's a Detroit 60 series in there. So, it's a Bendex model. What I did was a, a place in Illinois called Rebuilders in, Rebuilders Enterprises in Bridgeville, Illinois. They, uh, Ken, or Freightliner quoted me a remanufactured compressor for five seventy four and some change before um, taxes. This unit was three hundred um, rebuilt. You bring in your core and they have it ready for you right there. You just pick it up and leave um, for three hundred. So I would I would recommend checking them out. Again, it's Rebuilders Manufa or Rebuilders Enterprises in Bridgeview, Illinois. They do a lot of all the rebuild stuff, so that's where I'm going to be going for now on. Anyways, a few things. Always take pictures of what you have so you know exactly where all your lines go back. What I did was these two lines here, I just put a zip tie on the one that goes on the top. There's a sensor back here that I changed out. Because when the compressor goes in, that sensor right there, I'm not really sure what it is. It was about a hundred dollars, about ninety, almost a hundred dollar sensor. It was some sort of idling sensor. Um, so I just said, "What the hell, man?" I mean, I was, might as well just pull the old one and put the new one in, um, just because it makes sense. It's it's so so tight back there, man. I mean, I don't know how you would get that thing out of there. And get it back in. So while you have it all open, I would recommend changing that sensor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, I tightened this up. I, I pulled this out, re-Tefloned it. Made it really nice and tight. I wanted to pull this bracket, but I can't I can't get my impact back there to get it out. I tried with a, with a cheater bar and everything. I just couldn't get the bottom bolts out. Because I got to go inside the frame back here. But anyways... Um, <clears throat> so I'd recommend changing that sensor. Also, don't make the mistake I made. Um, there was a plug on the old unit I didn't take out. So I had to get this from Freightliner. Also, there's a pressure sensor regulator or pressure regulator sensor in there. This is like a backup in case your uh, air tank doesn't purge. If, if your compressor builds up to 250 PSI, this will automatically pop to release the air. I didn't pull the old one off of the old compressor, the old core. So with this, that little reducer right there, and that plug was about $57. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it was a $57 mistake. So... Make sure when you when you pull out your old compressor, I, I put a new air governor on as well. Um, I'll also go over that. Um, but make sure you take, again, take pictures to make sure that all your fittings are facing the exact same way. So when you take a picture on the inside of your amp motor, make sure that um, you know which way your fittings are all facing. That's a good reason to do your pictures as well. So every one of these fittings I had a picture of, so I knew which way they were facing. So when I put the hoses back on them, this isn't spun all the way over here, and i got to re get in there and retighten it. So take pictures. Also, excuse me, i got to chew in my mouth. Um, the uh, the air, the, the governor, you might as well put a new one on. I mean, it wasn't cheap. It was, I mean, it was under $100, so... You might as well do it. Also, the bolts that you pull off of your old one, make sure you take your old air governor off because the new air governor doesn't come with the bolts. I snapped one of these bolts 
with my big gorilla hands. Um, so I was able to go over to my local tractor supply and get two new bolts. So um, also, like I said, again, take pictures for your fittings. Um, so that's that's pretty much that. Now, there are two hoses that are right behind the compressor. This one here, I had them both here. Oh. This one right here was the old one. It was. It probably would have lasted, but I can use it for a spare somewhere at the shop. But while you're behind there, this this hose right here is so tight, so I mean, so so tight. It goes from here over to the motor block. You can cut it out to pull it out, but getting a new one in there, oh man, good luck. So while you have it all out, go ahead and replace the hoses. So. This one here replace, and then there's another one here. This one looked like it was pretty bad. It was bulging on the one side, and it was pretty rough. So anyway, so replace that hose as well with a new one. So there's going to be two hoses behind there, right? I'd replace those as well. Another thing, clean off your, even if it's a new, um, a new face, I would go ahead and clean it off with a wire brush and um, take some brake cleaner. And clean off the faces also this spider gear in here goes inside that big hole right there right here take your spider gear out and inspect it to make sure you know that it's not worn out or busted or anything you have to go through all this work and then have to replace the spider gear so anyways there is another gear inside of this and it's got a little like a little clip inside there. Maybe you can, yeah, you can see it right there. It only goes on one way. So on the inside of where your compressor mounts, that clip is in there. That clip is in there so you don't put it on wrong. It, it will not go on like this. It only goes on like this. So once you... put your spider gear in then it only go you don't don't mess this up you can't put it in like it, it'll go in like this but when you go to put it back in install the compressor that pin or that that clip in there prevents it from actually seating so make sure you put that in correctly it's got to go in like that now another thing um your power steering pump right there, you may, I, I got an extra gasket for it just in case. I might have to pull that power steering pump off to move the gear to set it in there. So what I'm going to do is I set the gear inside. Let's see if I can do this while I got my phone in my hand. What I did was, I set the gear inside, and then I pulled it out, trying to not really move it too much. So now, when I lift the compressor up, and they're heavy, man. They are heavy. So I don't really, because I couldn't pull this plate out, I'm going to stand on a ladder, and I'm going to tie a, an extension cord around the two fittings, and I'm just going to Arnold Schwarzenegger it up and kind of get up over this thing and get in there. And then there's a... There's a stud right here you can actually put your, the compressor will rest on. So make sure, like I said, the sensor's all plugged in. There's another sensor down here that I unplugged. Make sure that's plugged in. I had to unplug it to get a bolt out. 
Um, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five bolts um, to mount it. So the this one right here, this one right here, and this one right here, the three, I had to get an extension on a ratchet on a on a uh, uh, a socket ratchet. And it was over here, so I was able to feed it in through the back side to line it up with the bolt, and it came out pretty easy. So that that's not that bad. But the the thing I'm a little worried about is making sure that the gear lines up, and hopefully my big ass is strong enough to get that thing and kind of maneuver it in here. I really wish I could pull this plate off, but that ain't happening. Also, make sure that the inside of your housing your housing is all clean. I sprayed it with some brake cleaner and just made sure there's no debris or anything in there. And uh, so once I get it in, oh, another thing, another on your on your fuel pump. I also bought a new fuel pressure regulator. Um, believe it or not, they actually do. They're old, you'll get some smoking on your truck, a little bit of smoking, you will lose some power. And the sensor's not that bad, I think like 30 or 40 bucks for the sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. You, you don't have to do it, but it's just wise. I mean, they're easy to get to. I, I think I changed one out in that truck right there. I changed it out 10 minutes at a truck stop one time because I was getting some smoke and a little bit of less power. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the do on this I, I i did pull the the power steering fluid reservoir that was mounted to this plate hoping i could get that plate up but man she's just not coming off so so that's going to make things a little bit more difficult so i'm going to go ahead and do the do i'll do a second video on it and uh we'll see um we'll see where we're at and um uh, if you like the video please thumbs up and subscribe and i'll check in with you guys after it's all set in and let you know how it went. So far, it hasn't been as easy as I thought, but it's uh, better than paying a thousand bucks to a mechanic. Ciao.